assalamu alaikum everybody good evening i hope everybody can hear me uh, let's just yes. give it a couple of minutes and uh, we'll wait for people to join and then inshallah we'll start Okay. Uh, all right. I think uh, we have uh, enough attendees to start. Uh, so let's begin with uh, our session. And uh, I'm your host, Samir, and uh, I will be facilitating this webinar for you all. And uh, today we have uh, our uh, guest speaker, Mr. Mohammad uh, Ali Shalan. And uh, I would like to just take a couple of minutes to brief you all about Mr. Shalan. What uh, what's his background and what does he do? Uh, so Mohammad Shalan is the editor of a book titled Innovative and Agile Contracting for Digital Transformation and Industry 4.0 that was published in IGI Global in 2021. Uh, he's a passionate advocate of project economy, digital transformation, industry 4.0, governance, innovative contracts, smart resilient cities, including environmental ecosystems. He's also an author, a guest speaker, and a research researcher with published books, chapters, articles, and presentation. He's a very well-certified professional, multidisciplined, motivated uh, business technology interpreter. He's holding uh, nine well-recognized certificates and attended. Uh, he also attended different training classes in 12 countries across four continents. Uh, during his professional journey, uh, Mr. Shalan has worked with uh, major operational assignments, portfolios, programs, projects that are spanning in more than 50 countries with distributed activities, multiple vendors, numerous dependencies, heavy correspondence, and multiple discipline, uh, discipline contractors. Some assignments were more than 50 million USD. Uh, and currently, uh, Mr. Shalan is also volunteering as a VP of Digital Transformation in the PMI KSA, uh, Saudi Arabia. So, Today's webinar, uh, we are trying to discuss on the uh, role of transformation office, which we will be where we'll be discussing with uh, uh, with Mr. Shalan on connecting the dots between different uh, digital transformation initiatives, programs, projects, in addition to the surrounding ecosystem that is required to support the journey. Uh, and the objectives will be to understand the digital transformation journey and schools that, that these uh, dig digital transformation journeys follow, uh, uh, explaining the role of TMO and its correlation, amplifying the need of solid ecosystems to deliver and optimize the digital transformation value. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Mr. Shalan, uh, over to you uh, to take us through this uh, remaining part of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Samir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Actually, today I have two things to talk about before. First of all, thank you very much for uh, being my case as well for you, Samir, and for our attendees. Uh, I have two things to mention before I go into my, the bulk of my presentation. The first thing is about the um, digital government initiative, measuring the performance of digital, uh, digital performance or digital transformation performance out of the governmental and semi-governmental organizations. And maybe you have noticed that in a few days, before a few days, 
it was the announcement of the uh, winners, let's say, or at least uh, what the, how was the scale for uh, entities that have participated into uh, this score. And we see like in here that a lot of um, organizations have jumped like in here on the, on the left, we see a lot of organizations have jumped uh, multiple grades actually in this uh, scale for this year. And here, like here, as you see, Wazarat al taqa is, is going 70% improvement. So it's really an amazing that some entity can go this amount. As well, we will have, like a lot of entities have changed. And some we have, uh, if we compare 20, 2021 to 2022, we will see, for example, the number of ranking is increasing. And we have the number of entities rather than 193, it was, it's now 217. So 217, so we see the number of entities that is uh, measured is increasing. As well, we see the ranking is increasing uh, from 69.39 into 80.96. So it's a real improvement. On the same time, actually, we have like uh, some addition, some uh, entities have gone into uh, innovation. Uh, others have gone into integration. So we see a lot of entities actually is giving, getting a good ranking in this scale. And just to get you some information about the DGA, um, how it's yeah, the journey of DGA, which is measuring these entities actually, we'll see like, like uh, this started in March. So it was 13 of March, 2022, when they announced the measures and how, because these measures are evolving and every year it's changing. So next year or 2023 will be the 11th, uh, 11th measure. Currently it's the 10th one. So uh, in 2023 to be the 11th major, and of course there will be new uh, criteria evaluating these organizations. So as you see here, it was in 13 of March, the first uh, launch of the uh, criteria. Then there was opening the system and they gave like two months for people to fill into the system, entities to fill into the system, which is automated uh, to answer the questions and measure themselves against the criteria. Then after that, there will be a verification uh, mode for two months as well in May and, the, and June. And then in July, and there will be a kind of correction in case we saw there are some corrections or something like this. They're open like if Neolio and August for corrections, then another verification period, it will come in, in August to October. And usually in November, every November, they announce these uh, entities who are the winners and who are out how is the scale is coming for everyone? So this is a very important journey and it's, it's, and it's worth mentioning and it's worth also monitoring. So I think everyone who is uh, interested in digital transformation in general, especially in uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, uh, will need to follow up this. Usually you will find it in the uh, DGA uh, governmental, you see here, it's okay, this is the one. So in here, no, it's this around uh, the URL. Okay, I'll correct it, but usually it's in the DGA. So you'll find all this information coming in the DGA website, which is Digital Government uh, Authority. So this is the first thing I need to mention. The other thing I need to mention actually is we choose um, today to have this webinar instead of usually we make it tomorrow on Tuesday. And the reason is that we to avoid the, the, the game between KSA and Argentina actually. So we avoid this. But uh, of course, uh, we see a lot of people also is engaged in, uh, in the World Cup. So just, um, okay. So these two, two pieces that I need to mention before, then I will go into um, the bulk of the, this presentation. And in this presentation, actually, what we are trying to do is uh, we are trying to make it a kind of the journey, the full journey, how to plan for a digital transformation journey, how to make initiatives, how to make programs, how to measure them, and then how to manage them as well. So this is like a journey. And also in the middle, we will talk about, uh, for example, transformation management office, which is composed of a lot of things. So this is actually uh, will be, and I try to talk about 40 minutes about uh, this presentation. Then we will keep some time for the uh, attendees uh, questions. In case you have any questions, you can raise your hand or you can uh, put it in the chat or in the Q&A as well. And uh, our host, Mr. Samir, will be taking care about it. And in case you have something uh, you need to mention, maybe also Samir can take care about it. You can write it in chat.
Uh, first thing we need to talk about is about the digital transformation itself and how we define digital transformation. And digital transformation or digital business transformation, and this is very important, you see in this definition, we find business business three times, right? we find technology one time. So that is to focus that transformation is about business. It's not about uh, technology only. And when we are talking about transformation, we need to mention that this is a journey uh, to adopt and deploy digital technologies so that, and business models also. So it's not only enough to have, to utilize only technologies. We have some time to change the business models uh, so that we can change and see what we are doing. And then we need to improve the performance of the business or sometimes we need to create a new future for the business. And this is a very important thing that we need to focus on. The other aspect of digital transformation that is blurring the line. When we are talking digital transformation, we are talking about the digital world. So we have digital technologies, we have emerging technologies. We have all this kind of technology that's emerging since one century or some. And then we are merging this digital with the physical as well. So when we are talking about merging it with physical, meaning that uh, we will get actual results on our work benchmark, when bench desks. And we will talk about this physical as well currently there's another engagement with biological. So you see, for example, identity management, you see capturing of virtual reality, you see capturing of um, a lot of biological parameters as well for business intelligence and some related activities. So this is very important that digital transformation is blurring the lines between uh, these three words. So this is very important thing that we need to mention. Uh, one more thing is very important also for digital transformation. It is a journey, and we need to take care very much about how we are funding this, actually, this journey. Because this journey is not a simple journey. Usually, it will take some time. And we have to take care about funding as well, planning and contracting for this journey. And the reason for this, we have like RevOps, we have DevOps, we have uh, a lot of terminologies coming on. RevOps meaning how we create revenues out of operations, because, for example, if we are making a digital transformation journey for a smart city that will last for 10 years or 20 years, then we have to merge between operations as well between revenue generation. Other than this, then will be the project itself or the program itself will be, will be bankrupt, bankrupt and will not find the money to fund this project. So this is very important how you fund this project. This is very important aspect. We need to take care about it. Uh, and also we need to manage between the short term products and the short-term engagements and the long-term engagements. So this is very important thing. The fourth thing that I need to mention uh, before I go into the bulk of the presentation is to have the kind of inception phase. Inception phase is very important for digital transformation. And this is a big mistake that some people is going into the kind of this uh, transformation journey without inception. And usually this will create a lot of fire back on them, on the people who are designing and implementing this. If you go to the BMI, actually, this is just a page from the BMI. And BMI is mentioning the inception page in Disciplined Agile. It's not a kind of, it's not mentioned in the, in the waterfall approaches usually, because in waterfall, yani, you have something that is well defined. But in Disciplined Agile, you are talking about disciplined phase in which you need to form the team, as you see here, you need to form the team, you need to align with the enterprise direction, you need to explore the scope. So a lot of things you need to uh, take care about them. As well, you need to plan how to release the software or the products, uh, the strategy itself, then a lot of things as, all, as well the funding thing. So this is very important thing. And you need also take care about people. So you have to develop the common vision. So this is very, very important and never start a digital transformation journey without inception phase, uh, because this is dangerous thing that some people are doing and they are being uh, or fired back on them. Then we will start how we will make the journey successful. So this journey, first of all, we need to define the kind of vision and mission for the journey itself. I'm not saying, okay, and then aligning this with the organization or with uh, whatever, for example. If we are having a digital transformation journey here to create, to make Jeddah, for example, as a city, like the third best smart city in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, then this is our vision. 
our mission will be to replan and develop Jeddah as a smart uh, district or smart areas. And then we will achieve this major goals that we are trying to achieve for Jeddah. And when, then we will plan these goals. This is very important how we manage this, how we put a vision and mission that's clear and uh, distributed to the team who are doing it. Out of this um, mission and vision, we will start with crafting the strategy. And maybe uh, Samir is the strategy expert, actually, so he can guide us in some, some aspects. But uh, you know, uh, let me, Samir, allow me just to talk about something about strategy, and you maybe you can you know, add uh, additional points. So usually in strategy, and usually, especially in what we are talking about, digital transformation strategy, then it's not like what we have done before a few years. Before a few years, we used to write books, actually, our strategy. So we will plan for an organization. We'll spend one month or one year even uh, drafting a big draft, a big strategy that is uh, 100 pages, 200 pages, something like this. Today, actually, this was not working. And we have to be uh, very concise. We have to draft our strategy in few and in limited time. So in here, we identify the short term and long term strategies, for example, if we are talking about Jeddah as a smart city, then we, are told we need to identify areas that can be upgraded as smart districts in Jeddah. So we'll identify the points. We will work on the infrastructure that we are talking about. We need to establish the, the solid engagement with the vision team, as well with the, 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 other, the other teams, like for example, municipalities, other entities, as well the Saudi vision. Then we need to ensure high value de deliverables and how we will sustain, sustain the funding for this. Uh, additionally, you will integrate about some financial institutes, we'll see. Then we'll start talking about the teams. For example, we'll attract and upscale and retain employees. Then we need to, after we identify our areas that we need to work on, then identify our team as well, our funding strategy. Then we will go to write the build the right engagement model for technologies as well for stakeholders. Then we go, this is just as an example actually. It's not for real example, but just I'm trying to find the steps. Then we need to define the operation model for the smart city because this is a killing area in smart cities. And also how to link this, for example, to the ESG goals for environment, uh, social and governance so that we can get the value. So usually this is a kind of short and long term, long term uh, strategy point that we are talking about and we need to mention these things. So this is one thing. Then after that, actually, also we will build the, the pictorials of strategy. So in here, we will put in this pictorial, for example, what is the finance pictorial, how we can have the rough office model so that we can generate our money back on, uh, for, from operation. Then we need to see the customer experience or the customer expectations, how customer will be engaged in our uh, digital transformation journey, because this is very important. It's the customer as well, our workers, everyone who need to collaborate and every stakeholder need to collaborate. He need to have his kind of, uh, inter, his kind of involvement. Also, we need to talk about the internal operations. Sometimes when you are talking about journey for transformation, then you are having a lot of points that we need to discuss and to talk uh, about the, fo the functional activities, sometimes about how to manage this transformation team, as well, you would need to take care about uh, infrastructure. And this infrastructure is usually uh, sometimes it's a killing point because sometimes we build something on the uh, here or there, but it's not supported by the infrastructure. And by this stage, it will not be a winning uh, team or a winning project. So this is a kind of how we want the pictorials as well the strategic goals in, share, in short and long term. Uh, that's fine, Samir. Are you yes, definitely. Yes. Uh, actually, you mentioned something very important and critical. It's about uh, understanding the bigger picture and then breaking it down to uh, actionable items or initiatives that can be linked to the objectives ultimately. And this slide, uh, if you allow me, also talks about the balanced approach for an organization. You're looking at the financial, you're looking at the customer, you're looking at the internal operations, uh, uh, which are enabled by the infrastructure. So uh, you're really in embedding the whole digital transformation in the let's say DNA of the organization. I think that's really uh, important. Uh, it's very well said by you. Uh, actually, this is very important. Yes, exactly what you said to build it in the DNA because if uh, people are not on board, it will be very difficult because there is a kind now 
there's a term currently in, 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 in we are we are saying it's coming like we have emotional intelligence now we have cultural intelligence and unless it's the culture the organization the whole culture uh, of the organization is supporting this it will be very difficult to run a digital transformation uh, journey and yes. maybe there's one one big say for uh, Peter and Luther. he's saying that yeah uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast exactly <laughs> so culture can eat strategy for breakfast <laughs> uh, so we have yeah. to work with culture it's very important absolutely. thing absolutely yes uh, one more thing actually I need also to mention about is about also how we identify the stakeholders. Identifying the stakeholders in digital transformation journey uh, is very important. And I need to you see here on this, uh, you see here, just I'm trying to mention if, it's, if this is a document or it's a table, that's why I'm putting this uh, Excel sheet or a sheet here. So usually we have to build a table for uh, stakeholders and then to identify if these stakeholders, first of all, who are the stakeholders? Because usually in digital transformation journey, you are taking uh, talking about a huge uh, kind of stakeholders. For example, if you are talking about smart city, then you are talking about the clients, the government, the investors. You are talking about the service providers. You are talking about industrial clients, commercial clients, residential clients. So there is a lot of people you need to take care about them. Similarly, actually, you need to listen to the expectation. Every one of these stakeholders will have his expectation out of this uh, transformation project. So it's very important that you deliver this, you listen to everyone and put it in somehow that it will be its um, listen. We need to listen to everyone. Also need to manage the, uh, the promises, the promises. When you are making a digital transformation journey, you cannot, for example, go and over promise. If you over promise and you will not deliver, then if everyone will start saying, okay, this is not the successful, you need to define the success, the success criteria so that everyone will be aligned with you and you deliver what you promised to do. Also, you need to talk about the engagement, meaning that engagement, everyone will need to know his role in this. Other than this, actually, uh, it will be very difficult to get people on, 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 on board. Uh, yes. One of the major stakeholders is usually at the higher management. Usually, Absolutely. you need to manage your managers. Unless you are able also to, use, to manage your managers, then you might be in some troubles because Usually, you will um, make some direction change during the, yes. the program. And in case you make this change, if you don't, are not backed up and supported by your higher management, then it will be yeah. very difficult for you to continue because you will have fire back from your management Absolutely. as well from your audiences. Yeah, I, I think you mentioned something very important there uh, is to set the expectations from the stakeholders, both positive or negative. And more importantly, get the buy-in of the top management. And again, it goes back to the earlier point that you mentioned is linking the culture with, and the culture starts from the top. So if your leaders have that buy-in and they believe in this, uh, then it will be relatively easy for you to cascade it down to the operational level. So very important slide. Again, very, very valuable information, Mr. Rana. Thank you. Okay, now if we go to the technology part, after we have identified our strategic objectives, our strategic victorials, we have identified our stakeholders, then we go to our, to also to see our technologies. The technologies, as you see, actually, this is the Gartner Hive, and usually it is uh, every year, it's, um, it's published by Gartner, and there's a lot of organizations who are publishing all of these kind of technologies. Uh, some technologies are coming into the market, some technologies are leaving the market every month or every time, and every, uh, gradually, at every time, in the point of time. So usually we, you need to have a look on this kind of technologies. Then you need to choose a technology that is relevant to your project. We will not start with a technology. We will start with a, a need. We will start with a problem. We will start with a requirement. Then we will go into choosing the right technology for this. Uh, other than this, we will be, because it's not a matter of how we use these technologies and put these technologies into uh, our, our arena. The same thing actually is, how we listen also to the challenges. Because sometimes there is a challenge and usually we put a kind of uh, cards for the challenges. So usually there is a challenge card. You'll see later on, there will be a kind of project card, initiative card, something like this. So all these things, we are trying to make it so that you uh, will help us to plan for the journey. So in case, just to, to summarize actually the points that we have started talking about maybe, uh, and so that we get everyone focused uh, with this presentation. We will start usually the 
some signs on the road. We will start with the mission and vision, and that's what, what we start with the, this journey. Then we will, do, we will go into uh, strategic objectives and we will have the uh, strategic goals, define them. After we identify them, we go to the strategic pictorials so that every part of the organization is aligned and is, uh, you know, we are talking uh, practical, not theoretical, because sometimes we are going theory, theory and people are not listening for this. And then we will identify our stakeholders. Uh, after that, we identify the emerging technology that is good for us. And then we identify the challenges. Why we identify all these things, then we are ready to start the journey. This is not, we did not start the journey. This is, this will be the inception phase. This is why I'm saying usually start any digital transformation journey with the inception phase. So this is very important. Once you identify this, then you can go to the next phase which is you start making initiatives and the projects and prioritize these projects and initiatives. And at the same time, you need to focus on your enterprise architecture. You need to focus on your uh, infrastructure. If this infrastructure is supporting your voice or not, because if you are putting like, for example, a journey that was costing 20 millions and you don't have this funding for uh, 10 years, then you have to be realistic. You have to put your figures correctly so that your, realistic, your journey is realistic and you can get value out of it. Then after you see here, we identify some projects. And in this project, this is a kind of project card. After we have all these points, we identify like, for example, to get the digital transformation that we are thinking about, we are saying. Actually in here, I'm just putting the cards for the project card, initiative card, challenge card. But what I'm planning actually is to have a kind of, we have a magazine, BMI KSA, and we will be publishing uh, monthly. In this magazine, actually, uh, maybe we will put a full use case or a business case that's covering a real story for this uh, journey. So here, this is the project card. In the project card, we put usually the initiative that is related to this project, as well the project number, then some project name and the owner, and we link it with the organization goals. We link it with the, some KPIs as well. We put the budget for it, we put the time frame and the objectives so that everyone is aligned about this uh, project and how it will uh, support the full vision of the digital transformation journey. So we need to put a kind, maybe we, we put 10 projects, 20 projects, 30 projects. That will depend on how we identify our opportunities and how to see the future. At the same time, we, um, we will need to make a kind of initiative cards. These initiative cards is for every project, it will be part of, of for example, if I'm talking about smart city, then we have uh, an initiative uh, for infrastructure building. We will have another one for user experience. We will have a third initiative. And uh, among this, for example, infrastructure, you will find how you will put the IoT, how you will put the cameras, how you will put the uh, cabling, how you put the uh, lightning, how you put smart parking, all these are kind of infrastructure projects. So, so this would be the initiative. And then you will have like 10 projects behind this initiative. So you need to take care about how you are putting and defining your goals, your objectives, the time of completion, uh, the cost and everything. Then also sometimes you have put, to put some milestones for each every initiative because you will start prioritizing these initiatives and these projects and what a kind of milestones, how you measure any one of these initiative or any one of these projects. So uh, this actually, and some objectives so that you can sell to this to the people and tell them how to manage or tell them what they can expect from you for this uh, project. Here also, I talked about the uh, infrastructure and this is really very important thing that when you are planning a digital transformation journey, this is a business journey. And I, I, I'm instance, and I am telling everyone that transformation is a business journey. It is not a, a journey for technical or for technology, but you have to take care to make sure that your enterprise and your infrastructure is supporting, uh, is, is supported enough. So in here, as you see, we have the kind of uh, enterprise architecture. And here in, and you have multiple enterprise architectures, like for example, we have the FEAF, as well we have Togaf, we have Zachman, and also here in Saudi Arabia, we have Nura. Nura is the national overall reference architecture that is uh, initiated and developed 
by digital government authority so that everyone can follow up and see. It's, as you see, it, is, it has a lot of components. I don't want to go technically deep in these components, but however, it's very important to understand this and to make sure that you have the technical people who are supporting you in this uh, thing. Also in the enterprise architecture, you need to focus that. Enterprise architecture is about, as you see here, you need to manage the security. This is one part. Security is very important. You manage the security. As well, you manage here also the service management, how you are managing the service. On top of it, you have the governance and enablers, because any, anywhere where you have some innovation, where you have some, uh, it's very important that you have uh, kind of governance. Other than this, you will not be able to control everything. And in these, we have four pillars, which is usually coming in the enterprise architecture. We have the business uh, pillar, we have the information, we have the application as well, we have the infrastructure, meaning here infrastructure within the infrastructure is the technical pure infrastructure for uh, the digital uh, infrastructure for the digital journey. Uh, but all of this actually like enterprise architecture is related directly to the kind of digital transformation journey. Before I go on to the next slide, actually to focus one thing, uh, it's no one size fits all. So when I you see, for example, I'm talking about a uh, big project, it, will, it might have 10 initiatives, 20 initiatives, and then these, these initiatives will find 100 projects, for example. While when you are going for another one, you'll find it's a small organization, so it will need like three, four initiatives to be enough with uh, 10 projects. So this is very important. And when you are yeah. talking about this, this is very important also how you are managing this. Because the next slide, I will be showing the uh, TMO, which is Transformation Actually Management Office. Yes, uh, we just got a question and probably this is the right time to ask the question. Uh, the question is coming from Mr. Ahmed Hussein, and he's saying that shall we consider it as a portfolio management as it includes many projects and processes? What do you think, Mr. Shana? Yes, exactly. Actually, it's a portfolio and this portfolio will find some programs and some projects. So uh, transformation is a journey. And you see when we are going to transformation office, you see how it's stru structured. Also, it is there with some value realization, some others. So this will be any, this is the right question at the right time. As well, this is allow me to show that this next slide actually. So in next slide here, you will see how we are managing the uh, journey. But as I say, it's, no, it's now one size fits all. So in here, if it's a big organization, then we are talking about, first of all, we have the business owner, who should initiate this? And this should be like the head of the organization. Uh, and actually, in C we see here, I mentioned about the DGA. And in DGA, actually, and this uh, 10th now, uh, uh, 10th journey for the digital uh, entities in Saudi Arabia. And in CRE and in the ministries, the minister himself actually is following up this journey. In big organizations, it's the head of the organization are heading it. This is very important, actually, that the owner or the business owner who is the, the minister, someone is, is no delegation, actually. In transformation journeys, there should be no delegation. Delegation is not accepted. Um, and in here, this kind of business owner, then you will have a kind of uh, board or steering committee. And this board or steering committee will be doing a lot of activities related to that project. At the same time, you will have here, and this is very important in here, the expert panel. Because this expert panel will have two rules, actually. The expert panel will work before the project. It will work in the inception phase so that they create all these things we mentioned in the inception, the objectives and uh, the strategy and the stakeholder engagement models. It will be by this expert panel. And then we will have the alignment team here in the bottom. The alignment team is the team who need to align all these uh, projects with the business. Because I will mention this in later on, actually, some organizations prefer to run uh, project, projectized uh, initiatives. Others might run functional initiatives. So we need to take care about how to manage this or that. So in here also what you see in the team, why then this after I mentioned this, this is the business owner. Then you are talking about the board or steering committee, the expert panel, and the alignment panel. Then you are talking about how you are running this. And usually, currently, maybe the BMO name is being a yeah, part of the TMO now. TMO is the Trans Transformation Management Office, in which you will find the BMO, 
for project management office, you'll find the CMO, which is change management office. You'll find SMO for strategy management office, as well you'll find VMO, value management office. And then you'll have the work streams who are doing the, 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 the initiatives and managing these, these initiatives. And these will be like a programs, portfolios, projects. So these kind here, you'll find the portfolios, the programs, uh, the projects, and then you'll have a kind of work stream owners, and then you'll have the initiative owner or project manager, for example, or program manager or whoever doing this. So this is structure is applicable, and we see it actually in big organizations, in big entities, you will find this because you are having a lot of people working on transformation, and then you should have a lot of people. For example, if you go to some ministries, you'll find a kind of more than 100 initiatives uh, running at the same time. Then it's that's a huge time, or at least, or maybe 100 projects, let's say, running at the same time. And in this, you have to have a lot of people. And when I mentioned in the first, um, some organizations, some organizations have jumped like 70 degrees in, in one year. That that means that they have a huge uh, projects running at the same time, so that they can get this kind of huge jump. Other than this, it will be very difficult to, for them to jump if they don't have multiple initiatives at the same time. And then you kind of need to have a kind of this structure, which is a TMO with all these in the, in the okay, we don't, we are talking about bureaucracy or something, but sometimes we need this. Really, we need this so that we can keep aligned and focused. And then we are talking about the work streams who are doing the job. At the same time, we here we are talking about the line functions, like for example, training, and learning and research. And this learning and research is very important today because in digital transformation journeys, you are learning and you are changing your mind and you are making new initiatives. So you have to research every time and to learn every time. It will be very difficult if you don't do this. Then you have the HR team so that you have your calibers, you have your team uh, trained, hired, uh, something like this. You see who on the, will be on the board, who will not be on the board, something like this. And also the communication. The communication is very important, how we communicate across all the team and across everyone. So this is very important thing. Uh, this is applicable where you have big organization. In some organizations, maybe you have only one guy or two guys in every function so that it's managed. It will depend on how you are managing and what is the, what is the size of your transformation journey. So, so this is very important thing that we need to talk about. How do you see this, Samir? Yeah, I think this is uh, uh, very valuable and uh, I, I have a couple of questions myself, actually, and probably uh, the audience may also have the questions uh, in terms of the expert panel. So uh, are these expert panel uh, within the organization or do you think they are outside the organization uh, or is this uh, ex expert advisory that, that we can outsource uh, for organizations? Well, usually, usually it's a mix because you, uh, the people in the organization, who are the people who are exactly knowing their business and they can talk about the business. But sometimes you need some people from externally either to run certain functionalities. For example, if you don't have someone expert in change management, then you have yes. to find someone expert in change management and put him in this uh, balance while you are planning. Right. And also sometimes you have need some technical expertise. So if you need someone who is expert in uh, BIM technology for uh, real estate, or you someone who is expert in IoT, then you have to have this kind of digital twins. These kind of technologies that you might find, you might not find someone on the right time in your organization. So you have to have the, these team at least blank for you, helping you. And then out, part of the outcomes of this, we'll see maybe you can have a kind of training program for your uh, team and something like this. So it should be a mix between internal and external resources based on uh, the real uh, evaluation of yourself as well of your team. It's very important to be realistic. Usually in transformation, you be you need yeah. to be authentic actually. Me, unless yeah. you are authentic, then you are either a dreamer or you are just uh, <laughs> not doing anything. So usually yeah. you need to be authentic with yourself so that this is what I can do, this is what I cannot do. And yes. that's why you need the business owner to be on, on board. <laughs> Yes, actually, and that, I think that's very important. And it goes back to the uh, first slide that you mentioned about the inception phase is you need to document uh, what what does it mean to you and what does it mean to the organization? 
and especially uh, you know when you are doing such big or uh, initiatives like for example as you mentioned for the saudi government uh, it, it's it's done for 33 million or 34 million population so uh, that's their stakeholders list and again this is not including the external stakeholders but at a, if you look at the country level digital transformation and uh, the just the sheer volume of it and the the size of this uh, project it 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 just complicates everything so again it goes back to the uh, the documentation part and the clarity that what you want to achieve uh, in this uh, in this digital transformation journey i think that's very important yes and, and also it's, it's very important to be realistic in implementation how you can implement yeah. how you can put the dividends between these projects so that you can actually yes deliver this on time and, and i actually and i was happy to see this in the in the dga report for this year, like some people have jumped 70 degrees. This is really wow. uh, amazing. Yeah, exponential. This yeah. In one year, it's really yeah. amazing. <laughs> That's exponential growth. Uh, you know, you, you, normally this is such kind of initiatives, uh, you know, they take long time. Uh, and again, there's a lot of uh, different constraints and variables playing into the equation, you know. So it, it's not easy. So, wow, that's amazing, actually. Yes. Okay. So this take us to uh, actually this is for example the prioritization of projects, how we prioritize the projects as well, how we put it in, in in years actually this will be initiatives and projects, and by this actually this will be like how we are doing the kind of uh, linking these things. Um, maybe this is the end of my slide. I, I make it like what I promised is around 40, 40 minutes. So I think maybe if you have any questions, Samir uh, from the audiences or uh, yeah. do it. Uh, I haven't received any uh, questions yet. Uh, audience, if you have any attendees, please feel free to document. We'll, uh, we'll give you a couple of more minutes uh, and uh, we, can, we can take it up with uh, Mr. Shalan. Uh, if you can document your questions, that would be great. Okay, while we have uh, some questions, actually, I need to talk about the kind of uh, what's going in for project economy as well for the projectized or functional implementation of the project. This is a very important thing that I need to talk about also. Uh, the issue is like this. Usually we have a kind of, we used to run the functional or the operational activities based on our uh, functional department. So we have HR department, we have finance department, we have um, procurement department, something like this. Today, when we are talking about the project economy in general, then we are talking as well about how we are moving from running departments, several departments, to how we are running the projectized. Meaning that when we, every time we have a kind of initiative, this initiative will be across the multiple uh, departments, yeah. multiple yeah. functions. Workflows, multiple workflows. Exactly. And here also we need to engage everyone and we need to yes. make this like a kind of project. So it will be a project. Yeah with a lot of stakeholders here and there, and they, be, they will be taking care about this kind of initiatives, how it's delivered, how it's uh, generating its value. It's very important. Sometimes, of course, it's a kind of mix. Usually, in the transformation, you cannot run everything projectized because sometimes something is related specifically to certain function or related specifically to certain departments. So it will be very difficult for you to manage it in a projectized manner. So it's a kind of mix. And when we talk about project economy today, and when we are talking about discipline, agile, all this kind of stuff, then we are talking how we are mixing between projects and functions and how we are trying to find everything, a kind of projects. Like let's take, for example, car manufacturing. Car manufacturing, every part of car manufacturing, like making the engine. Every year you have to modify the engine, you have to do a lot of things. So this by itself is a project. And then you have another yeah. project for other things, you have are linking all these kinds of projects. So this is very important thing. Similarly, what we are doing for uh, smart cities, for example. For smart cities, we are doing the same thing that we are uh, having a lot of things uh, working together and we are planning them into multiple phases of the project. And yes. so sometimes- Neom Neom is a great example. Uh, Line project is a great example. Uh, just the scale of these projects, uh, they are, they're setting the standard not just for you know uh, the other companies but for the world itself and 
it's so futuristic you know almost like a sci-fi movie uh, uh, you know level of technology being implemented there so uh, you you're absolutely right and uh, it becomes very important to you know plan this as a project and ensure you carry along everybody uh, on that on that note i actually had a couple of questions uh, in terms of where do you see uh, the tmo going forward and how because now especially after the covid times you know there is a lot of disruption in the business as we know it the, the simple brick and mortar model of businesses and there is a huge transformation or shift towards digitization or digitalization of whatever we are doing right now right so uh, this meeting that we are having for example is on a webinar and we have people connecting from qatar and you know uh, and different different countries i believe so uh this wouldn't not be normally possible although this technology was available long ago but just now the the business need or the need of the r is everybody is going digital so where do you see uh, mr shalan uh, as a country as, as saudi arabia and generally uh, the business environment the need for the tmo and the digital transformation itself Actually, uh, we see a very big demand actually and, and, and when you see this kind of uh, dga or digital government authorities Here in Saudi Arabia, how they are now um, evaluating this every year? Then you have to see uh, what, how the potential is coming for uh, digital transformation as well for innovation. The same thing is for TMO, BMO, CMO, everything. These kind of words actually we uh, we are not used to hear them so much yes. for few yes. years. Now we are hearing them too much as well. Yeah. For example, the value, the value management yeah. office. Maybe you you will you will teach us about the value management how we how we share a value yeah. and how we generate the value out of what we are doing. This Absolutely. is very important thing. Uh, the benefit realization and the value creation itself. Uh, you know, uh, even in PMI standards, uh, you know, the value is now added as part of the whole system. If you if you recollect the old uh, PMI standards, we the project was focused on close you know planning documenting. you know executing monitoring and controlling and then closing right uh, now it's integrated the value chain is integrated so what value you are creating how it adds value to the business i think that's the uh, that's where the whole uh, uh, the ecosystem is now going towards uh, generally yes so, exactly uh, exact i think uh, i think mr mohammed asked the same question that i was about to ask you is how to convince the top management uh, that the value of the import, uh, of uh, improvement and and digital transformation so how do we get the buy the the million dollar question <laughs> yeah actually usually the you know yani, the top go, the, the top people in the organization should be involved and should be convinced because actually you need to show them the value first of all there is two things here for example in the government entities as we see in dga they are uh, having this kind of evaluation it's a yearly evaluation uh, coming out to the top levels of every organization so everyone is questioned about it and every uh, senior manager is have his own targets against this uh, this goals so this is very important so this is coming from the uh, top people in the organization other than this actually you need to make the business value for them sometimes we as team or we as we um, working digital transformation we have to show them how yani we have we need to benchmark actually where they have now where they have where where, where they will be after 10 years or few years yeah. based on some studies that we see because you see a lot of big giants actually big organizations yes. have this ability because they miss the train for digital transformation absolutely they are prime so examples uh, amazing examples uh, xerox intel uh, microsoft themselves so many examples over the last few decades and they have missed the bus and nokia again another example uh, you know they just felt for whatever reason they didn't want to <laughs> they didn't need the uh, you know the the technology itself so yes you're absolutely right and uh, so uh, building on that uh, uh, how when we build this buy in I, i think it's part of the visionary the owners itself that they need to be vision visionary it's uh, themselves to be able to see where the future is going right how do we is there any platform or is there 
any such uh, uh, with your experience and you know you are in you are the expert the guru in this so for the uh, best interest of the audience how can we identify or learn about these new technologies uh, as a as just uh, you know uh, as a professional who would want to learn about uh, new technologies out there or new way of doing things is there any venue that we can go into yeah, actually there is there is a lot of frameworks first of all for digital transformation one of them is 6o mit hive is on uh, a lot of uh, big organization actually and universities have their kind of the digital transformation framework and anyone who is who is working in digital transformation journeys should have a kind of awareness about these kind of frameworks and then he will see what will what will fit him because usually you will find these frame I any mean, uh, the digital transformation frameworks is not like very much mature like what we see for example in project management like me my something yes. like this we might have started since 1969 so it's yeah. a long journey for them but this is not the same for digital transformation so still we are seeing a lot it's evolving so you will see a lot of schools a lot of frameworks and that's in here where you where you come you will kind of find the kind of experts who can guide you in certain points based on your case actually because it's not again it's not one size fits all so yeah. this is a very important yeah. thing and on the other side actually based on technology then you have to actually have a kind of research team who are supporting you with what kind of technologies that is good for you maybe you can have a look on uh, similar examples so for example if we are talking about um, smart city then we have fine we have kind of benchmarking for smart cities oh, what is the best uh, smart city in the world what is so there's an index actually usually published every year by IMB for example about the smart cities or the smart cities and how they are they're forming so when you see this kind of report then you will understand that for this industry you find these are the leading uh, cities and these are the technologies they are uh, working on. These are the initiatives they are working on. So you can take care about it. On the same time, the research organizations like Gartner, like Forrester, like uh, others, yes. like IDC, they build, are building a lot of reports. Sometimes it's customized reports based on uh, certain industry or certain uh, business line or something like this. So usually it's a kind of, uh, that's why we here are putting learning and research as part of the alignment yeah. functions. That is very important for a kind of journey. Uh, in this slide, actually, you see yes. this learning and research people are very important because we cannot stay like what exactly. we before just to have a kind of uh, a school that we are doing since 10, 20 years. You have the Absolutely. same school. Absolutely. And working. even just the, the life cycle of the technology itself has, you know, shrunk so much that it becomes obsolete in a matter of years, you know, two, three years, and then you're totally different platform different technology that's been adapted so you know you have to always keep that uh, look you know looking outward and see what's happening out there and how can you be you know fastly adapting to that like for example now the digital payments uh, you know uh, almost cash is you know are not being used outside in the regular uh, markets you do you don't you go to bakala also you you are a supermarket you just pay from your phone or your watch or you know if you have an apple watch or something you just pay it uh, directly so that's the uh, on a daily basis our life has already changed in the last two years especially in here in saudi arabia i believe and i'm sure everybody here in the uh, audience or the attendees can also uh, re, you know agree with and uh, also uh, going back to uh, my uh, another question that I would want to ask you is, if I'm an employee, uh, you know, a normal employee in an organization, small organization or a medium-sized organization, and I believe in in digital transformation as I understand the importance of it, right? And again, uh, you know, it's linking with what our uh, attendees just mentioned in the comments as well, is how if I have to go and you know, get their buy-in or put this out in front of, you know, people to see that, guys, we need to focus on digital transformation because everything is going to be digital in, in the near future unless it, it has already become digital, right? Uh, how, what can an employee, a, a normal employee do about it? If you can give some guidance or some tips to us, that would be really helpful. Well, actually, everyone is, uh, has a role in, in digital transformation as well as innovation. Because uh, you, maybe you have seen this actually in some big organization, they have a kind of innovation time. 
So they have a kind of innovation. If every um, employee have a kind of slot weekly, two hours or three hours with some budget so that he uh, built some kind of innovation and initiatives. This is very important to have it uh, with everyone actually. And in case your organization is not supporting uh, innovation, as not supporting digital transformation, you know, I think it's, it's the time to, to leave this organization and find another one because uh, it will be vanishing after some time. So rather than keeping an yeah. organization that is uh, falling, let's go to another organization that is... Uh, <laughs> That's focused on... Yeah, yes, absolutely. focused on going up. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shalan, for your valuable insights. And I think uh, the whole the attendees and the participants enjoyed this session. Uh, it was really uh, valuable for uh, uh, everybody, I believe and uh, uh, very engaging and very crisp and concise and to the point. I think that's the beauty of this uh, whole session. Uh, again, I thank you everybody for joining here today. Uh, um, I, I'm Samir, I'm, it's been a pleasure hosting you all on behalf of PMI KSA. And we look forward to having you all in the next webinar. And uh, please keep in touch uh, with uh, our uh, LinkedIn channel and we have our social media handles. Thank you again, everybody. Have a pleasant evening. Take care and stay safe. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Samir. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.